Hi everybody, welcome to Let's Make Art. I am Sarah Cray and I paint a lot and hopefully you do too if you watch these videos. We do a different watercolor project every week and this week we are doing a pickup truck with a Christmas tree. Oh. Pun title, Pick Up Christmas. That's what I named it. You like it? I like that. Okay, thanks. Um, you're seeing me in all of my natural glory today. <laughs> Please be nice to me. <laughs> but that is because we are working so hard trying to get these Black Friday orders out to you. Uh, we really appreciate all the business we got and we are working really hard to get those out. And that is why I look like this because I go straight from shipping orders to right here. So that's it. <laughs> but I have more value than the way I look, okay? So what if I have zits all over my face? Who, what 30 year old doesn't? Right, exactly. That's what I want to know. Okay, we have four steps to this project. So the step number one, we're going to do the red on the truck. So that'll take a bit, lots of red in this painting. Step number two, we are going to do the tires and like some of the black areas. So like here and maybe a little here. Step three, we're gonna do the tree and step four, Should I say details? That's my line, details. Details, step four. Keenan nailed it. Good job. Thank okay. You. Um, so that's not that bad. This might seem scary. It's not. Also, you don't even have to use red for this project. One time I did a vintage truck for my father-in-law for Christmas using coffee. A lot of fun. He loved it. Just ideas. Okay, different colors you can do. But we're using four colors for this. We are using black red, pine green, and dandelion yellow. So I think those are the exact same colors for the cardinal. Um, so, great. We're ready. We're ready to go, we're ready to paint. If you don't have any of these supplies, oh, we're using a round two and a round six. These are my go-to brushes. They're excellent. If you don't have any of these supplies, you can get them on our website, letsmakeart.com. We have a kit. We have a monthly subscription box. We have a plethora of art supplies. So take a gander, you know? Maybe you can find something you'd like. Okay, we're gonna start with step one. Sorry. <laughs> step one, we're going into our truck. So, I'm getting my brush wet, and uh, I've already outlined this using graphite paper that comes in your kit. If you have the subscription box, and you're not sure if you have graphite paper, it's in with the postcard. Let's make Art Matter postcard. That's where we fold it and keep it. If you don't know how to use graphite paper, then you are going to want to watch the live tutorial because I go over how to use all of that stuff. We do warm-ups, all of that. But this is just like a quick little guy to get you guys going. Okay, so I'm getting my brush wet. I'm hitting it off the side so it's not totally dripping because that would be too much water. And then I'm going to pick up some red paint. And I know that sometimes we're having a little bit of problems with the red, wet with the red paint being a little gloopy. Um, you can try mixing a little bit of water in there. If it's totally unusable, just email us at hello at letsmakeart.com. But I think red is kind of a weird color. We've been talking to our mixer of why this is happening. And uh, somebody posted an article about red pigment and how it's different and reacts different to chemicals. I don't know. I don't know much about science. <laughs> I just like the paint. So get some red paint. And we're just going to start filling it in. So there are lots of lines here, lots of different um, like surfaces going on. So don't get overwhelmed. We'll just take it step by step. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of paint in this door. And of course, you can use whatever supplies you have because everybody has access to these videos. I don't know if you guys know that. Okay, so I'm gonna start in filling in the door. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice is kind of where it hits. Keenan, maybe you'll know this. What is this part of the car that goes over the wheel? Is that a, is that a special word, part of the car? I wanna say wheel well. Wheel well? Wheel well, in the wheel well, but I don't wanna also sound like a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. So. 
Well, I think it's the wheel well. So. I also want to say fender. Mm. But there's a bumper, there's a fender, wheel well, so I'm never sure. I think the fender is the front. That's what I thought. Bumper Bumpers would be back. Like, see, that's why I say wheel I don't want to talk. <laughs> Keenan's like, please stop asking me questions. I'll, I'll I research. don't know the answer to I'll anything. I'll research. Okay. So because we have that, um, we, we kind of want to show that this part is sticking out from this red part. So we're gonna put in a little bit of a shadow right at this line right here. And by putting in just a little bit darker value, I mix a tiny, tiny bit of black in there. Then you're gonna get um, a different value and then that's gonna make this part pop and this part recede if you put a darker value on something. So, and there's a little handle there and that's why that's white. So just like the tiniest bit of shade darker. And you'll notice that as we go through this truck, the red truck, there's gonna be multiple times where we're adding a little bit of shadow or adding a little bit of highlight. And that's because we want this truck to be as three dimensional as possible. And so paying attention to those slight value changes, that is what's really gonna make your truck pop and seem like it's actually there instead of just two dimensional flat on a piece of paper. So put those in. And really that's like what art is about, like being able to replicate nature well or what you see well is paying attention to those small changes in value and replicating them, which are two different things. Being able to see them and then being able to paint them. Okay, so then I'm gonna do, is it called a wheel well? It's a fender. This part is a fender? Yeah, the, the fender is is designed to, it frames a wheel well. So the bumper. I feel like that should have been more helpful, but I don't understand still. <laughs> I'll show you a picture. Yes. So this round part is called a fender. Yep, and then you've got the front bumper and the rear bumper. Oh. There are also, for bigger trucks, there are, uh, what they call them? It's gonna be really simple trailer fenders and flatbed fenders. <laughs> okay, 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 let's not go crazy here with all the information. Keenan, calm down. I can only handle so much. Okay, fender. That's what this is that we're painting. Now, as I'm filling this in, there's gonna be some sections here and that I'm gonna leave white. And the reason why I'm gonna leave that white is because that's gonna be our glare because this is a shiny, nice little car. Also, I'm going to leave a tiny thin line in between this red and this red, and that's because I just don't want them to bleed together. So I'm just going to kind of avoid some of this area. Now over here, it's a little bit more dry, so it's okay if I touch that. But right here where it's dark, I'm not gonna to wanna to touch that, at least not yet. We're just gonna keep on keeping on. Just trucking along. Just trucking along. <laughs> Keenan? Yes. That was good. That was a good one. Okay. Okay, so I left my highlights here on the top. Now we're gonna to move to the back. Now, the back part here on the truck, there's like, you know how on cars they have like different design things that kind of pop out just a little bit? That's what's going on here on this truck. Can you imagine it on a real truck? I think so. Okay. This also has a little shadow underneath it because it is sticking out. So that means what's underneath it is also shadowed. So basically, if you want something to pop out while you're painting, then you have to put a shadow like either like under it to get it to pop forward. So like this, so underneath here, it's going to be shadowed. Am I, am I making any sense? You mean to make it seem more three-dimensional. Exactly. Because if we, and I'll show you over here. 
So on this side, if I paint this all one value right here, and I don't differentiate where this line is, where it's supposed to pop out, then this looks totally flat. The surface looks totally smooth and flat. But if I go in and I put a slight shadow underneath it, like this already looks like it's popping out even though we haven't even filled, filled it in yet as compared to this. Now it's a little bit harder to try and do a shadow while it's wet because you don't have as much control. It's gonna just start moving, but I'm gonna live on the wild side and just try it anyway. It's working fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put my red in over here. I'm gonna avoid that edge if I can because I want it to be a clean, smooth line. But if you accidentally hit it like I just did, don't get mad. I'm not mad about it, it's not a big deal. Nobody cares, and if it loses all your shadow because it bled into it too much, then just wait for it to dry, and then go back in and put your shadow in again. Problem solved, you guys, not a big deal. You're going to make mistakes when you paint. Everybody does. You just gotta learn how to fix them or roll with them or not care about them. Okay, so my truck is looking pretty good so far. I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow right here because the back of the truck and the front of the truck, there's actually like a section in between where there are two different pieces. And so this has a shadow here and this will fill in later with black once it's dried. Okay. And now I'm gonna do the rear fender. That is correct. Are you sure? I am 100% sure. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just I gonna... may have sounded like I dabbed myself earlier, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> it was a plot twist when I said wheel well. I was just making that up. <laughs> making it more suspenseful. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to paint this part again, leaving some little glare sections white. And if you accidentally paint over glare sections and you're like, oh shoot. It's not a big deal, you guys. The outlines are just guidelines for you. You don't want it to seem too like blocky colored in anyway, so it's not a big deal. If you can put it in, do. If you accidentally paint over it, whatever. Then it just doesn't have a glare there. Or you can go back in with like bleed proof white, which is a magical thing that I love. And just put white over it. Or sometimes even acrylic paint. I'll use acrylic paint to do a little white highlight. But you don't want to mix acrylic paint in with your watercolor to make it a different color because that will turn it opaque, which means not transparent. It's going to look totally different from the rest of your painting, if that makes sense. So many things I'm saying right now. Okay. I'm putting in a little extra shading underneath here and then also kind of where the truck meets the step part. What is that part of a truck? Is that a special? Side step. Side step? Yeah, there are different trucks that have side steps. Okay, and I'm gonna blend this out because I don't want it to be like a strong line. So I'm just taking my damp brush, I cleaned it off of the paint, and just kind of blending. So it's a smoother transition. I'm a fan of smooth transitions. Okay, great. We're just going to keep on trucking in Keenan's words. I feel like you learned a thing or two from Molly while she was on here. She is legendary with puns. Molly, she did the December florals and her puns are the best. Okay. So when we get to the, to the roof, the hood, I knew that one. You are going to leave a space for the glare. These are the most basic parts of the truck. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so embarrassing how little I know of basics of life. <laughs> I never realized it until I'm literally recording myself talk. And then I'm like, what am I what am I even saying? I should be so embarrassed. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> 
you're like, I just want to point out that everybody should know these things yeah. and you don't. <laughs> That's okay. I'm mostly pointing it out for myself as well. Well, at least we can laugh about it, right? Yes. So on the back part of this hood, uh, of the cap yep. of the truck right here, this is a really thin red line. So just make sure your paintbrush doesn't have too much paint and water because then you, it'll be a harder time getting the thin line. And you're just going to like, just barely, just boop, put that little thin line in. Now I like to do the truck first. And the reason that we wanna do the truck first is because we actually want the green so I'm leaving kind of some sections here for the Christmas tree but and the whole point of that is we want it to make it feel like the Christmas tree is kind of overlapping the truck in some areas you know how trees have branches that stick out and kind of come out and overlap so we don't want a perfectly clean cab line right here because the green because watercolor is transparent it's gonna be hard to overlap it without seeing some red underneath so that's why I'm kind of leaving out some little chunks for that tree to kind of come out and overlap. And then the reason why we want it to overlap is to make it clear that the tree is on top of the truck. Okay, you guys, you're doing great. We're still in step one. I know this is a long step, but it's okay. It's just, it's just, you know, put in red stuff in, it's okay. And then same thing on this, the bed of the truck. If you can a little bit, just have your tree kind of overlap just a little bit. Okay, and then right underneath, there's going to be this sh kind of shadowed area right on this line. I'm going to go back and put the shadow in on this side that I lost because it was wet. Okay, Okay, I think I filled in all the red parts that I need to and now we're going to go in and we're going to blend out some of our glares. We want to keep some glares nice and white and we're not going to add anything to them and some of them we kind of want to soften up because glares are going to have that transition. Some of them are going to be bright white and then some of them are going to be, it's going to almost look like a pink or something which if you as you start to pay attention to things as you're drawing or painting and looking at things as, as reference that's what you'll notice like if you're painting a black dog and it has highlights then the highlights themselves some of them are white like bright white and some of them are like a blue or some of them are like a purple and so you kind of just have to pay attention to what those highlight colors actually are it's kind of tricky but you guys can do it so this first one this little chunk right here I'm just going to go over with a really light wash just soften that up so it's not bright white the one behind it I'm gonna leave bright white so I'm not gonna worry about that this one over here I'm gonna soften up down here the front of this one and this this one can be a little bit more random it doesn't have to be like two-thirds of this line has to be soft pink or whatever it doesn't really matter just as long as we have some of those bright whites and then some of those maybe more soft pinks for those highlights, then you're good. And then also on my truck, right underneath this tree where these branches are gonna be, I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow underneath here. So a little bit of a darker value. And that's because if the tree is overlapping the truck, then it would cast a shadow on the truck, the tree itself would.
okay, in this rear fender. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Softening up that highlight. You can uh, you can try and use the paint that's already on your painting and just add water to spread that out. If it's not spreading at all, then just get a little bit of a little bit of red on your brush and just paint the wash itself. And this one I'm just kind of making a little bit more red around this highlight. Because sometimes when we blend, we blend out the color too much that we lose our saturation. Yes, yes, looking great. Okay, I'm gonna blend out this one. I think that's good. I think that's all I need to do. Maybe an extra layer of red right on that top. Nice and bright, okay. Step one, complete. Nailed it. Nailed it. Step two, we're gonna do the tires. Now, the tires are a little funky shaped. Let me tell you why. It's because you are seeing, so like this fender here, it has a back part to it. So this little chunky part right here that sticks out from the tire, can you see that over my palette? This yeah. part right here. This is actually the back part of this fender. So it's not part of the wheel, but because it's so dark and shadowed underneath there, all of it is kind of that same dark black. So um, just trust me when I say to paint it black. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in. And if your red is still very wet, wait for it to dry or leave a nice little thin layer of white in between because we don't want that red, that black bleeding into the red. Now your tire itself is going to have value and lights and shadows on it. And um, so that's why there's all these different like lines going on. But basically, most of it is gonna be this black. I left a highlight on the bottom of the tire here. All this part is gonna be black. And I know it's super hard tracing like perfect circles without them getting lumpy. So if it's easier for you to like, I don't know, take a lid of something and draw a circle so it's a smooth circle, go for it. I do that sometimes. And then for the middle part, I'm just going to kind of do this and then I'm gonna blend it out after it dries. So we're going to leave that for a second and let that dry and we're going to move on to this part. So I'm going to add black here, kind of right where it's meeting the truck and then right at this bottom. Again, thin lines. You want light pressure. It's easier for me to go horizontal, but some people like to go up and down. So turn your paper, whatever's easier for you. And then I'm going to actually make thin lines on my... Um, what is it called? The step, the side step? Well, I thought you were referring to a side step originally, but that is just a step. Oh, it's just a step? Yeah. Okay. So the step is what we're going to do because you know how they have that like ridges in them for yeah. grip? That's what we're painting. So it's just a little, just a couple little lines. but it's gonna be the most black kind of at this front. Then we're gonna let that dry, we're gonna move on. And the reason why I like to let things dry is I actually like to use a lot of the color that's there and blend it out. And if you do it while it's still wet, then it just blends it all out and it just becomes the same value. But if you let it dry for a second and then try and blend, it's a lighter value so you have your dark and medium value right there just by doing that. Okay, same thing on this tire. We're seeing the other side of the fender wheel. Also tires, they're circular, but they're like thick. So it's a circle and then it's like a thick line 
around it. You know what I'm saying. You've seen tires. And this black is pretty strong, so you might have to water it down a lot to get it movable. And then same thing on this one, we're going to go back in and put the grays in. Now you can see on the original painting here that when I did my tire, my red part was red and it bled into it. But who cares? Nobody, I bet you guys didn't even really notice that until you were painting that tire. So don't get mad if that happens to you because it's just part of it. It's just like water and the color have a mind of their own. They're gonna do what they wanna do. And sometimes you just gotta, you know, let them. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. Now there is a very thin layer of black on the inside of this window. So just, if it's easier for you to use your round two because it's a smaller brush, please feel free. I'm gonna just be crazy here and use my round six. And I'm gonna hold my breath. Nailed it. That is incredible. <laughs> And that's just the interior of the car that's shadowed. That's why that's black and why the inside of this is going to be black also. Now, um, when I was making my drawing, I did an extra little line right there when I was tracing. So I'll probably just go back and erase that when I'm done painting, so I'm just going to ignore that. That's why that line's there. It, it shouldn't be there. Can they see that even? Yes, they can. Just ignore that. That was just a mistake on my part that I'll erase. Okay, now I'm going to do the black part in between the front and rear part of the truck. So it's just a little separation. Try and keep it thin if you can. like that okay and now we're gonna do the bumper <laughs> and to make silver or like gray you're just gonna take your black and add water to it and it's gonna mix gray onto your palette and I'm just gonna fill that in using this gray color and this is a oh my gosh my brain it's a light headlight this is a headlight here. It's not on, so it's just like gonna have like a slight gray shimmer. <laughs> what? I thought that was a grill. Oh. Rather than a headlight. Maybe it is the grill. I don't know much about cars. Is it the grill? Yeah, because on an old truck like this, I'm pretty sure the lights would be kind of sticking out of the front of the fender. Oh. And the grill would be up on the nose like that. Okay, this is the grill. Keenan, thank you for that information. You're welcome. And these don't have to be particularly detailed, just a color there. And then now I'm gonna go in and um, wash out some of my tires. So you just want it to be a lighter value here. And then we'll blend this in. And then the very middle part, this is the part that's going to be the lightest. Right there. And again, if you blend too much and you lose your, your dark values, then you can always wait till it dries and put them back in. So don't get mad at yourself if you blend them out. Just wait a second, put them back in. Same thing on this one. 
blend them out. Now on this part where we didn't color in this section because that's actually going to be the highlight on the silver part, it's just, it's just going to be pure white. If you did color it in like you did on the first one, don't get mad. It's not a big deal. Nobody's even going to know. And then we're going to blend out the step, which is just a step that I've learned. No special fancy term for that. Or so Keenan tells me if I'm wrong, I'm blaming you. <laughs> I can take the blame. Okay, great. We finished step two. You guys, good job. Now we're moving on to step three. Now we're gonna do the tree. And I just wanna to talk to you guys for a second about this tree, because here's the thing. When you paint or draw trees, you are gonna think trees have a billion little leaves and a billion little needles. And how do I communicate that without drawing a billion little things? But the thing is what our brain sees and what our what our brain is telling us what we see and what our eye sees are two different things. So when you look at trees, I don't want you to look at each individual leaf. I want you to see it how your eye actually sees it, which is their chunks, like hair, like fur. It's all of these tiny things that gather together and create bunches, and then those bunches create shadows and sections. So when you're doing your trees, I'm gonna put my highlight in first. So I'm gonna pick up some yellow, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of green in so it's like a nice bright green because this is our highlight. So you wanna make sure with your tree that you have your, we're gonna go for white highlights. We're also gonna have a super light yellow. Then we're gonna have a plain green and then we're gonna have a super dark green that we mix with black. So there's actually gonna be, try four different kind of values on this scale. So I'm gonna go in with my like lime green here and just around in these sections, I'm gonna be doing these kind of swoosh marks. Now, some of these I've outlined to leave to remind me to leave some white spaces. Now, if you go too crazy with highlights, it's not a big deal because you can always cover them up because they're lighter. But basically, and you don't want just the highlights on this side, you also want some coming towards this side as well. Now this corner is not gonna have any because it's getting shadowed by being put into the trunk, but they don't need to be just on the top. They can be kind of towards the middle as well. And it's more random and you might be like, I don't understand why you're painting that one specifically. It, it's just, it's random and I just wanna do it in kind of sections. So here's some sections here, okay? So there's my highlight for my tree. Now I'm gonna add some green. And I mixed a little bit of yellow with it just cause I like a warm green as opposed to a cool green, but that's my personal preference. So then I'm gonna start putting those in and I'm gonna work kind of underneath the highlights a little bit. Again, still leave some white spaces though. You don't wanna totally get rid of all the white that you have going for you. And I'm kind of doing these swoosh brush marks because trees are swooshy. <laughs> Keenan's face. Yeah, trees are swooshy. Do some over here. And you might be like, this doesn't look like a tree. Hold on, it will get there, okay? Just believe me. <clears throat> Keenan, do you believe me? I believe a lot of things, was to there, include you. Was there something I was painting ever that you watched and I'm like, this will be fine, and in your head you're like, there's no way that's gonna turn out fine? Have you ever had that thought? I wanna say the either the bumblebee or the hedgehog. <laughs> the hedgehog. I think it was the bumblebee. It might have been the bumblebee. Because when we filmed that bumblebee, like at the end you're like, I, you, that was. <laughs> yeah, because I was pretty amazed that it turned out well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me too. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna put in my darker green here. So this one is more the pure paint, not with any yellow in it. And I'm just gonna keep kind of putting it in. And don't forget, you could also just use some water to spread some color around. You're gonna get some different values that way too. And then I want you to make a darker green. So you can either mix black, or if that's just like too gray, you can mix a little bit of red in. And um, that red with that green is gonna give you a darker green that's kind of more brown than gray because they're complementary colors. And then we're, you wanna put that in too. And I'm and because these are kind of sections, they're gonna have some shadows out on this side too. It's not only on this corner, it goes across the entire thing. But it is pretty heavy in this corner because that's the corner of the truck. And of course, if you're, if you're struggling, take a break, look at it from far away or walk away from your desk and come back to it. Sometimes when we're looking at something for a really long time, it's difficult to actually see what's going on because we're so in it and so focused and so, you know, all about it. So I'm going to put some shadows in up here. So I put my shadows in and then maybe just put, see if I can just drop some strong color in places because that's what I like to do. And then another thing you can do to add some texture onto your tree is taking your round two, you can go along the edge because the silhouette of your tree is going to have more of those tiny little spikes of the pine needles because it's the actual silhouette. However, I strongly encourage you not to just like all the way across because that is going to totally kill all the form that you just made with your values. So it's a little bit more random. So it's like, here's a couple sticky outs and you can change up values too. Some of them can be darker or lighter. And then here's a couple that just stick out. And then here's some that stick out and over here You can do some on this side too. So I'm kind of doing this like whoosh motion, kind of like whoosh, 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 whoosh. But again, random, because if I tried to do this tiny little motion across the entire thing on the edge, it would just, it would just destroy the shape of my tree. That was a little dramatic. Your tree wouldn't be destroyed. It just uh, couldn't be as real as maybe you would want it to be. And then maybe also kind of where it overlaps the truck a little bit, because there are gonna be little individual branches. So it's gonna be like, kind of coming out this way. Maybe this is coming out here. Some over here. So just play with it, but keep in mind, try and have those four different values there with leaving some white here and there in some places to act as your like ultimate highlight, ultimate highlight. Can you do that big when you edit this, when I do this? Can you put text that goes ultimate? Okay, great. <laughs> I may distort your voice too. Okay, please do. Ultimate. Ultimate highlight. <laughs> Okay, I'm liking my tree. It's looking good. I'm going to put some yellow back in here. Cool. It looks good. Yes. Maybe do one more dark down here. Yes. 
Now I will, I will admit that the hardest thing about painting on video tutorials is like I can't like get up and walk away and then come back to it because I really do that when I paint in real life. So please give it a shot. Um, it's very helpful in terms of composition and color, helping you see what's actually going on in your painting. So do it, just give it a try. Also, somebody on our Facebook group, we have a Facebook group, it's called Let's Make Art Together. It's pretty amazing. Um, somebody said that they, when we, they did the Cardinal, she just tried to keep up with me because a lot of people, because I paint really fast because I've been doing this for a long time. And she said it was actually kind of really helpful just to like go um, because you just like have to make decisions quicker. And she said she kind of liked her painting because what she said, I think it was Debbie, I want to say her name was, but I don't know. Debbie, sorry if I got that wrong. But she says that she liked it a little bit better than the other paintings that she like took so long for because it was just like quick. Because sometimes when you spend two hours on a painting, you have a higher expectation than when you spend 30 minutes on a painting. But when you just like paint it quick, let's say you did this in a half hour and you didn't like it, you're like, oh, it was just a half hour and I was just doing it quick and fast and I learned some stuff. Whereas if you like just sat there forever and hours and it didn't turn out, you can be kind of disappointed. So I would also encourage you just to like try and go fast and just like do it, lay it down quick because you're just, you have to make decisions faster and it's a really great way to learn art. That's what we do in art school, is teachers set timer and they're like, you have 30 seconds to draw this person. And you're like, okay. But it just gives you a, a great, um, it's a great lesson in how to communicate the shape of something quickly. That was a little long. Let's move on to the painting. <laughs> Let's get back to doing what we're doing. <laughs> okay. I did my tree. That was step three. Last step. Details. Details. <laughs> did you almost forget again? I mean. <laughs> Keenan. Okay. For the details, you just do like the tiny finishing little things that maybe you forgot to do while you were painting or maybe you kind of want to adjust. This one, I'm going to do the little steering wheel. So it's just a black little skinny guy. Right there, great, excellent, nailed it. And then just like anywhere else that you think just needs a little bit more attention. I'm gonna kind of work on my wheels a little bit. Kind of put back in some of that darker value that I lost. While blending, whilst blending. And I think I'm going to do it on my little step. And sometimes with these paints, um, if you're using just the paints and not a lot of water, you're going to get some fuzzy edges, which it was happening. You can kind of see that in my tree right here. And that's because I was just picking up the paint and not adding any water to it. So if you notice that you're getting some fuzzy edges on your paintings, try just adding a little bit more paint to, I mean, a little bit more water to your mixture and that should help it. It's just because these paints are pretty concentrated. And so when you use them straight by themselves, they go a little crazy. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to do, but I don't think so. I think it looks pretty good. Putting in some shadows. Yeah. Okay. And then some of the, oh, the handle. The handle on the door is silver, very light gray. Chua. And then some of these white edges I left white so they wouldn't bleed together. Sometimes I leave them or sometimes I'll just like blend them out at the end when things are dry. Up to you, your choice. 
Okay, you guys, we did it. Good job, you nailed it. I can't wait to see how they turn out. Um, if you paint it, share it. Uh, we have a, I already talked about our Facebook group. I will until the end of time. It's called Let's Make Art Together. You do have to request to be a part of it. And we ask for a joke when you join and it is the best decision we have ever made as a company because <laughs> I get these great jokes daily. Anyways, back to what I'm saying. Um, you can join there and post your work and you can see what other people have painted. Now, um, I've noticed that there have been a couple comments lately about how like people are intimidated to post their work because the people posting um, seem to have more experience. First of all, let's make art together. It's a safe space. Don't feel that way. Second of all, usually people only post when they feel that confidence. So it makes sense if people have a little bit more experience with watercolor that they're a little bit more willing to post their work because they've been doing it and they feel more comfortable. And I totally understand that feeling, but if you're a beginner, just like push that insecurity away and just post it and just be like, this is what I made, um, this is what I learned, blah, blah, blah. Because the more comfortable you are with posting your work, the more you're gonna be excited to share it, the more you're gonna be excited to try new things. Um, people have been posting the Cardinal and doing a bunch of different versions with it and it's been so beautiful to see what everybody has made. So just go there, take a look. If you feel ready, post it. Um, and if you do it on Instagram, you can tag us in it. Let's go make art. Next week, we are painting Winter Snowstorm. <laughs> now, just a reminder, this one, we are only doing a recorded tutorial for. We're not doing a live of this painting because that is Christmas. Christmas or Christmas Eve? One of the major ones where it's like... The live would be Christmas Eve. The live would be Christmas Eve? No, I'm sorry. It'd be Christmas. It would be Christmas? Tuesday. That's right. Well, I'm going to be with my family that day, so I will not be here. However, we'll release the recorded tutorial so you guys can still paint it. Can't see what that one... Can't wait to see what that one looks like. Do I need to say anything else? Not that I know of. You guys, you're awesome. Thank you for watching In My Natural State. And uh, I hope you like this. Okay, bye.